Hello and welcome to the second Overlap Live Fan Debate in association with Skybet. We've got fans from 10 different Premier League clubs and three footballing legends. So without further ado, I'd like to invite to the stage Gary Neville, JB Carragher and Paul Scholes. <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> hey man, got yourself on the front row now, eh? <laughs> Everyone's been talking about the big rematch between Fury and Wilder, but I want to see the rematch between you two. That's <laughs> I'm a legend now, aren't I? So, yeah. <laughs> Guys, welcome. I'm going to kick things off with you, Gary. It's your show. Talk me through what have you made at the start of the season? Because last time we spoke, nothing had happened. I think it's the most enjoyable one I've seen for a long time, if not ever. Uh, I think the quality is really high. The games are great. Obviously, the fans being back in the stadiums and fans feeling comfortable again. But I think we've got great managers in the league and I think we've got some really fantastic teams. And I do think at the moment the Premier League is the strongest in Europe. I think that was proven by the Champions League final last season. And I think that we're going to have a brilliant league this year. I really do. I think it's exciting. Carry on to you. Is it, have you got a standout player so far this year? Uh, I think there's probably been four or five who've really stood out. I saw Ronaldo got player of the month and he, he has had a huge impact, there's no doubt. I think of, you know, Lukaku, yeah. certainly the start of the season. A, a couple of Everton players as well, Andros Townsend's been amazing, Decore since he came in as well. But I probably on the back of the goal he scored at, against Man City, I'd probably say Mo Salah. I think he's, he's top scorer in the league, but I think he probably just edges it at the moment. But it looks like it's going to be a big season. Is he even in the eyes? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, <coughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I'd go for Mo Salah. I think he's, he's just, just edged it. Fair play. So, I, know it's, I know it's super early, but have you got anyone that you feel like is nailed on for the league? Or who do you think is the favourite? Nailed on? Not nailed on. Who's, who's the fav your favourite? I think it's between Liverpool and City. Yeah. I do think there's four great teams in the league. Well, no. Three definitely great teams. I think United, <laughs> um, over the last couple of weeks, have uh, not fell away, well, yeah. fell away, but it, it, no, it's very early. Yeah. I just think City and Liverpool watching that game yeah. two weeks ago, I just thought the quality was that high. I really can't see any team getting close to them. Fair play. Well, you know, we're in stones throw away from Old Trafford. Uh, you boys are super happy. You're less, less happy. You. Um, Adam, I'm going to come straight to you. A Skybet fan survey. 76% of Man U fans retain their faith in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Right, but I want to know, do, they, do you think that 76% they believe or they just really want it to work? And you're in and amongst it as one of the fans. I think obviously because of our relationship and our love for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we definitely in there anyway. Yeah. Social media is a different story, but inside that ground, everybody wants Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to succeed. I'm the same. When he got the job permanently, I thought... I'm not sure about this yeah. one, but as time's gone, gone on, I thought after his first season, he earned the second season. After the second season, he's earned this one. Um, the progression's been there, but the squad's got better. And as a result, the expectation now is through the roof. And I feel over the last couple of years, whenever the expectations come with Ali, whether it's in a final or whether it's, you know, a semi-final or whatever, we've just crumbled a little bit. And I was just wondering, like, I, like you, want Ali to succeed, so I'm not one of these people just calling through his head all the time, but after that game against Everton, I don't know whether it was me overreacting like I usually do, <laughs> but it felt like a turning point. It felt like severe after, with Mourinho, where it felt like, oh, this isn't going to go the way we think it's going to go or we want it to go. How does Ali turn this around is my question. Like, how does he turn this around and live up to that expectation now? And is it too much to be ex expecting someone to learn on the job almost? Is that to me? <laughs> to to goals. you as a goalie. You've got to You don't want to avoid the question there. Um, well, um, look, I, I think he deserves a chance. You, you think of the last three or four years where United have been, it's been shocking. Right? It's not, mm. been, not been great to watch um, before he came. He's took him two or three years, I think, to build a squad where... We think the pieces are there to the puzzle. He's just getting them in that right organisation. Now, I think you know, there's a lot of excitement at the start of the season, four or five games, beat Newcastle, beat Leeds. And the last two, two games are, have been disappointed, you're right. But I think he deserves a chance. He's, he's built a squad where he should be given a year at least, at least this season, to show that he can manage, that he can, he can win trophies. You go back to the Europa League final um, against Villarreal. He couldn't make a sub. Mm. He could not make a sub because of his bench just wasn't good enough. His squad wasn't good enough. Now, he could probably make four or five changes. 
And the one thing I would say about the last two games, especially the Everton one, I don't think Man United are in a position to rest players. They, they are nowhere near good enough to rest players. They have to play the best team right from the off. If you go back 10 years, 10, 15 years, yeah, you could probably get away with it. Look at City now. They probably get away with it. I'm, I'm not sure about Liverpool, but City, City got two teams. You can rest players against these lesser teams and expect to win games. But again, for this season, for Ole, I think you have to feel them coming. I think with City, when they, when they won the league, you're looking back 10 years, you felt them coming. You felt that you know, they were really putting pressure on teams. With Liverpool, you felt them coming. They got really close to Man City. I think they lost out by a point or something. I think for this season, I think being acceptable was just feeling that team coming as Liverpool and City did. I agree with Scholes on the picking the team because I think he's got to a point where I think he thinks that he can do a little bit what Sir Alex used to do where he's got 22 players, yeah. you're all good I can hear him speaking actually. Yeah. He's saying you're all good players, I trust in you, I can bring five in there. But if you look at Jose and Pep and Jurgen Klopp when they were trying to win trophies and establish winning trophies, they did keep a more consistent team. He has to keep a consistent team in the league and the league is going to be the competition that's going to make or break him. Yeah, of course he could win a Champions League and that's a one-off, but he does have to win the league at some point, you know, you can't keep on obviously spending the money and not winning the league. I, my fear for Oli is that the start of the season is worse than it looks. Because yeah. at the moment you look at the league and you think they're two points off the top, but they haven't played a single team. And I've, I've not watched United yet this season live because I've been doing all the other games. Yeah. Liverpool have played top teams, Chelsea have played top teams, City have played top teams, they've played Chelsea, they've played Liverpool, they've all played each other in the first seven games. United haven't kicked a ball against a, what you would call a top, top team. Yeah, Everton are doing well, but you know, against the top six, United haven't played one of them. They've now got, I think, four games against the top six teams in the, in the next sort of uh, month or so. And I fear that, look, they do sometimes deliver in these games, but my fear is that the start of the season looks worse than it currently actually yeah. is on paper. Do you think that he should have more time or he's had enough time? No, he definitely gets this season, but I said it's make-up. But the sign does of he now, need to win a trophy? Yeah, he does. The, you, you could say he could come second. Yeah, but when you're in charge of a club, you, you, wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have a manager for three and a half years whether the no, trophy I think, or do well. Look, you, I you think, just, you'd have sacked him if he was at Salford. There's, there's, no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no doubt with where United have been. And if, if, he was, wouldn't he? If, if Oli had been the manager <laughs> in the post Sir Alex Ferguson slipstream, he'd be gone by now. Yeah. But because of those bad experiences that United have had through getting rid of managers after a year, two years, eight months, they're going to live with him, I think, and believe in the project for a longer period. And I think it's probably the right way to go because they've had bad experiences through changing managers. And it costs more money sometimes to change. What I do think is now, three years in, this is his third full season, performance has to improve. So the problems that Oli's got at the moment is Ronaldo coming means it's make or break. Yeah. You have to win with Ronaldo. You have to win. You have to win a trophy. He's not coming here not to win a trophy and be second and third and fourth. Second thing is the performances are the poor. Yeah. I mean, you said it last couple of games. I don't think they've even played well in a lot of the games where they've won. Yeah. You know, when they win... I meant I, more result-wise. Results, the game, yeah. But the performance levels... You know, I, we watch all the top teams. We see City, see Liverpool, see Chelsea. I do. Dis I disagree with Scott. I think Chelsea will challenge the title, personally. But I don't. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's a debate. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I, you know, I think Chelsea will because I watch them and they're a team. I think they can come through difficult yeah. moments. One of the consistent things we have had is McTominay and or Fred. We had the chat briefly before when we, we, we did the overlap the first time about that midfield. Is his reliance on those two going to cost him then? Because I just don't, I just don't you're see. You're not asking for Pogba centre midfield, are you? Hey, Pogba. No, we've got other other options. In Matic, Matic, Donny. You've got Pogba, you could play Van Beek, I think he's played Pogba. five minutes. Matic and Pogba, if you... The thing for me with Matic was... Man United have a better against, team with them Matic two in midfield, West. and I'm not nah. a Man United fan. Oh, you watched Pogba in that European the ball, game man. the other night. McTominay doesn't show for the ball. I've watched, I've watched the likes of Carrick and Scholes and Keane all my life sat in <clears> the ground, and one thing they do is they show for the ball. Against Villarreal, we had Etienne so Capoue. Etienne Capoue playing and bossing us, like... He was playing at Watford how long ago? So who would you play in midfield? I would, I would have rested Matic against West Ham in the League Cup when we got knocked out and played him because he knows how to play the position. So he's another holding midfield I'd wrap player? I'd him up in cotton wool, yeah, Matic. Because McTominay and Fred can't do it. They can't do it. Fred wants to do it, but his brain goes I'm, I'm not saying he's good enough. You know more than me. These know more than me. Obviously, Manchester United need a midfield and maybe two midfield players. But the, the idea that... The reason he always goes back to them is because when he comes away from them in the game's high watch, when Pogba's in there or you're talking about Van der Beek yeah. going there or to more open, Man United are absolutely all over the place. That European performance, uh, who was it against? Villarreal. Villarreal. 
That was unbelievable. That was with McTominay that. hiding, though. Pardon? That was McTominay hiding. No, 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 no. That was McTominay in midfield. That was all. I, I think that's a, <laughs> the, the problem is you talk about so many players there. Ollie doesn't know. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> None of us know what the best. Who would you pick in central midfield? McTominay. With who? With Pogba, I think, because he's he's the better option at the minute. I, I don't see. But why do you I, think? I, he, sorry, sorry, interrupt him. I watched Pogba for France, and I think in the, in the yeah. tournament in the summer. He was one of the players of the tournament in yes. centre midfield for France. Whenever I watch him centre midfield for Manchester United, even sort of two weeks ago, it, it, he's so poor and he affects the team so badly. You, obviously, that's your role. But he's playing, what do you think it is? With, with the national team, he's playing with a higher... No, listen, I'm not level. having that. I'm not, when you're a centre midfield player, when you're that's a centre midfield... Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Of course, there's a different quality of player. I get that, but from your point of view, he's, he's never in midfield when I watch Man United. He's everywhere but where he should be, and I don't see that for France. I don't know. Do, do you know what? I think it's more the hope thing. You just, because of his reputation and what you've seen playing for France, what you've seen playing for Juventus, you, you keep hoping. But mm -hmm. you're looking at four or five years right now mm -hmm. thinking, is it ever really going to happen? And then you think, am I picking Pogba or Fred? Pogba or Matic? I really think it's the six. Because like, we've seen Pogba at times be fantastic. Last season, he was, he was excellent towards the back end of the season. You know, we've seen seasons when he was top goals, assists, all this, that and the other. I just feel getting that right person behind him. If Matic was five years younger, he's probably that guy. But I feel overlooking that position has cost us a lot. We, I, could, I, we could talk about yeah. Pope all day, but what, one thing that I can't not talk about, as you mentioned him briefly, Harry is Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is Ronaldo. Is it the right sign to make? Because the last time we, we were all sat here, it wasn't even, it, it, was, it was a pipe dream. It wasn't even in the, in the conversation. You said he's, he's come to win. And that adds another level of pressure. What does it do to the dressing room? Is it, was it the right decision from Oli at the time? And will it turn out to be the right decision? I think... That's a worrying sign. That's <laughs> pause, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, look, I think they had to do the deal. Yeah. So the first thing is the club had to do the deal. I think Oli had to do the deal. But with it, you know, comes big positives. But with it also comes problems. Ronaldo had to be managed, shall we say, in the 2008 Barcelona semi-final, away from home, Cristiano Ronaldo was shoved up front on his own, and Rooney and Jason Park were shoved wide, and Tevez was brought back onto Busquets. Because you couldn't carry him in the big games, because he, does, he, he generally doesn't work hard. So he's playing up front there now, you're never going to press from the front. So the idea that Manchester United can become a pressing team, with Cristiano up front, is never going to happen, because he wasn't pressing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So what you say then is, what's the style of Manchester United? Well, are they a counter-attack team? That becomes difficult when you're playing against teams that are inferior to you most of the time. So what you get is teams like Aston Villa and Everton then counter-attacking mm. a bit of quality. A half-decent team against Manchester United will cut through them. That's a problem. So they've got to stop that. There is big decisions that Oli's going to have to make in the next few weeks to compensate for Ronaldo coming. So when I said I thought United could win the league with Kane, and I don't think they can with Ronaldo, I say that with knowledge of both players. Yeah. I've, managed, I've coached one. Kane doesn't I, press anymore. But I just he think, that, I just honestly think that the, that the team of Manchester United would be better. However, what they have to find now is a way of playing with Ronaldo in there. So I support the signing. He's a great. I love him to bits. I couldn't love him anymore. But United have to find a way of playing mm. to compensate for him, like we did 10, 15 years ago when Scholes and Carrick were in midfield. But they had Jason Park working like a, you know, like you wouldn't believe over here. Rooney slogging up and down on that right wing, and Tevez slogging up and down around it. Everyone else was working like a dog to compensate for Cristiano. If you then put Bruno Fernandes in there, you then put Mason Greenwood in there, you then put Paul Pogba in there with Cristiano, you're going to get cut through on the counter attack, and you ain't winning any leagues. Trust me, you aren't winning leagues. So there's got to be a balance to the team. What does he, what does he do for the dressing room? For those, for those players that see the way, the way he works and the way he motivates? Is it a positive? Because I hear good things from, from some of the boys that are playing. Yeah, it, it can only be a positive, can't it really? Even from when he was a young kid, from being 19 to 20, his dedication to training, on the training pitch, off the training pitch, was second to none. So for them lads to look up to, it's, it's brilliant for someone like Mason Greenwood. Yeah. Brilliant for someone like Marcus Rashford. It's great for them to look up to him, watch him every single day, watch the ability he's got more than anything, his technique. It's great for them. And you know, we hope that people like Mason, especially, Marcus is coming back now. Yeah. Go on, Kerry. When you said we hope, I said I don't. No, you know, <laughs> I was looking at guys, so. <laughs> no, I think what Scolzi said, and you're talking about the dressing room, yeah. I think 
it's always talked about what Cantona did for obviously yeah. the class of 92 and I think it was probably a bigger thing then than it is now because I think almost every player in the dressing room is professional you can yeah. still look up to people and take things from people but I think the what happened in, in the 90s at Man United with Cantona was probably a bigger thing in terms of watching a real professional I actually think Ronaldo's better for the Premier League than he yeah. is for Man United it's a massive story everyone's watching and we're all talking about him I, I, I'm with exactly what Gary's saying in terms of the problems he could give Manchester United. He will score goals, but this, this, this idea that he doesn't press right now and, listen, is pressing more important than goals? I think goals are more important. Yeah. He'll get lots of goals. But if you actually go back to the very start when Oli came in, the big thing of getting rid of Lukaku was because he, he doesn't press. Yeah, he'll get goals. Yeah. But he's not like 10% of forward. Yeah. He's not going to press. I mean, everyone was almost behind that. This is the way the game's going. You know, Klopp's coming, Guardiola's coming, Pochettino. Our teams are doing this. Well, Man United have got to be that. And we can't do that with Lukaku. So you lose Lukaku, who would have always been one of the top scorers. And you've replaced him with, I'm not saying he's exactly like Lukaku, but he's going to score loads of goals. But if he doesn't score, I'm not sure what he's going to give you now because yeah. at the age he is. Yeah. He's been one of the greatest players of all time. But it's just something I remember uh, the Manchester United manager saying when he got rid of Lukaku was one of the reasons he's, he's almost got an identical player now at the top end of the pitch I want to stay in Manchester I want to talk about City Grealish another big signing impact so far has he done what you thought he'd do what you thought he can do only seven games but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to come to you, you in a second to get the fan perspective but Gary you start us off has Grealish impressed you so far? Yeah I think he has impressed me I think the thing that probably just not concerned me. I didn't think he was the right fit for the centre forward position against Liverpool. Mm. I didn't think that was th that that day. I don't think he should have played. I thought Ferran Torres should have played there. Um, I thought that he struggled a little bit in that game. Um, City struggled in the midweek before that against Paris Saint Germain through playing Raheem Sterling there. So they're trying to, at the moment find who can play in that position. So he might get stuck there a bit. But generally, I think on the left hand side, um, I thought he played quite well for England last night. I was surprised yeah. when he, he came off. Um, but because City have so many great players like De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, he doesn't stand out. Yeah. He's never going to stand out because they've got that many great players like him. But he's doing very well. But probably for 100 million, people are probably thinking a little bit like Paul Pogba. Yeah. You want him to stand out. But the problem is De Bruyne is a 150 million pound player. Foden's a 125 million pound yeah. player. They're, 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 they're unbelievable yeah. players. And you know, he's probably third in line behind those two, to be fair. But I still think he's doing very well. Stephen? I think a lot of people who aren't City fans who don't pay attention as much as I do as a City fan forget that um, you have to learn a lot when you become a, a Y player under Guardiola. Like when Bernardo Silva came, he didn't get into the team until October, November. Same with Leroy Sane. Um, even Riyad Mahrez had a slow start and these are you know, high quality footballers. Um, obviously, they're at different stages of the career but Grealish essentially is undergoing a bit of an education how to play for Guardiola team and to be honest, I think his performances have been fine so far. Some good games, some quieter ones but you can get the sense a little bit that he's definitely aware that he's no longer the superstar on the team and he's definitely a little bit, not in awe as such, but he's definitely you know, deferring to the likes of De Bruyne and so on, even Foden to an extent as well. Of course, his profile shot a lot recently, but Grealish, Guardiola said it best when we signed him. He just responds as well, he's 25. And I think the point yeah. he was making there is he's not signed him to be brilliant this season. He's signed him, City have signed him for several years. And the way I see it with Grealish, everyone knows he's fantastic, um, but he's got, he's got, a lot of goodwill in the bank with Manchester City fans and he should do because it doesn't matter if he's not perfect or brilliant for the next few months and I know do he's got you, that price tag. Do centre forward instead of Grealish? If I it was one or the other, I don't think you need a Grealish. I think he's a brilliant no, player. No, I don't think, I think everyone knows. I do. think you need them. It's, but do, you, do you think you, you need a centre forward if you could? You, you proved last season you didn't need one to win the Premier yeah. League but because you think that could make a difference in the Champions League? I, looking from City's point of view, I think that 100 million should have been spent on a striker. It rather, rather than, than a left winger. Whether it was either or, and the City have maintained, at least by the press, that it, it wasn't the case of that. It was the case that we wanted Kane as well and we could afford it, but it never happened. And yeah, City needed a striker. Also, as well, it wasn't really kind of hidden that Bernardo Silva was apparently really keen to leave, just for personal reasons. He wanted a new challenge. So I, I presume Greedish was bought in, presuming that that was going to happen, and it didn't happen, which left us a bit top heavy. Yeah, we definitely need a striker. We kind of, I think, got away with it, but Squadio doesn't really get away with Do it. You need he a just, striker, though. We, we, oh. <laughs> 
you know, as well. I'm going to be going against Chelsea, teams. you know. Like, um, Pep's a manager. He never, ever has a striker. I think the one thing, like, every team has their weaknesses. And City, obviously, we've got a manager who knows how to solve these problems. But the, the, the thing that maybe does let us down, and Gary mentioned the PSG game, City, in my opinion, were the better team in that game, yeah. despite losing 2-0. And I don't think I'm being biased there, but we just didn't take our chances. And that, it's, it's those kind of moments where um, it was weird watching that game as a fan and not being disappointed overly, because it felt like we played well. But it's maybe those games at the highest level when you're playing against, I don't know, a Messi. You saw what he did in that game. That's maybe where we're lacking that kind of collision. It's not front. to say you would have won that game, though, is it? Sorry? If you had a centre forward, it's not to say you would have no, won No, we wouldn't. Look maybe at the not. goals you've got but in the I team. Guess the chance, got goals all around the team. I guess the point I'm making is you look at the world, and obviously Messi's Messi, but it, like you see the best strikers and they do take the chances that, I don't know, a false nine like maybe Raheem Sterling won't take. And I love Raheem, don't get me wrong, but he, he, he's not killer in front of goal. And that's the one thing Man City sometimes do like. Playing under Guardiola is... Um, it's, well, you Shut yeah. up! Shut <laughs> up! Yeah. 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 Why did I stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me a question. Right. Don't be so yeah. We should Jesus never have sat you two Christ. together. That's that's that's. Show me. I'm going to be home in 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sure. I've got to stay. You know what? Sure. I'm 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 going to poke the bear. I'm going to I'm going to come to you. I'm going to talk fact. Are we in a position with Tottenham? where nobody's happy with the Harry Kane situation. He doesn't look happy. He was getting berated first two games. City don't have a striker. You basically play him without a striker right now. What's the thoughts in North London? It's not that, that bad. Um, but there definitely since Gary Neville's interview with Harry Kane that there has been issues. <laughs> um, and, like, and, and the other Thank thing... Thank you for the plug. Also, <laughs> potentially, everyone's seen it. It's rubbish. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, well, it was ridiculous. No, I don't want to talk about that. The, 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 you know, but another thing you mentioned was the um, Daniel Levy being the best operator in the Premier League, and it was a while back, to be fair to your credit. But uh, yeah, he's 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 had a role to play in this Harry Kane situation. We have a massive issue at the moment with him, where I can't say he doesn't look interesting because if this narrative around him didn't exist, I don't think this conversation would be having would we be having about Harry Kane? Is he is he is he in the right mental space? Because everybody knows the situation with him. It's, uh, his performance is probably under more scrutiny than they need to be. I don't agree with what you said, Jamie, about him not pressing. He has, he has been working hard, perhaps not the same level as when he was really motivated. Well, well you must be watching a different game then, because, I mean, we watch them a lot, we analyse, we look at all the stats. What I'm saying is, he is a completely different player than what he was under Pochettino. If, you, if, you're, if you're watching a different... I'm watching a different Harry Kane. No, no, I'm, not, no. I'm not being critical of no, that. No, no, no. What he's doing in terms of dropping off and that what he did last season was amazing. And that's... I don't think Kane's ever going to be the centre forward anymore, running in behind people, pressing no. people. Maybe that was Mourinho's style of play, but I haven't seen that for two or three. I didn't see it with England in the summer. Mm. He, he really conserves his energy a lot like I see when I watch Ronaldo or Messi, to be honest now. Yeah, I mean, he's played at number 10 throughout his youth career as well. Mm. He hasn't always been a number nine. He is so good in front of goal that you kind of feel like should we just leave him up top. But obviously, we've got this issue. You can't not play him as Spurs. He's got to play for us. Um, the alternative is just to have Son up front. And, and you see the difference between the two. How well they were playing last, last, uh, last season was Son and Kane were on fire. Son is still on fire. Signed a new contract in the summer. Says he loves the club. Grateful of, of, um, of you know, the opportunity we've given him. Please don't interview him next summer. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and Kane's in a similar, similar situation where I'm not sure he can win. But the, the relationship between the Tottenham fans and Kane is Strange. damaged. It's, yeah. It will never... I don't think we'll ever get back to where we were. Fair. Have you... Boy's been in a position where a player's maybe tried to leave and then come back into the dressing room when something's falling down. And, and what, what, yeah. what is that like for the, for the rest of the group? What's that like for them? Has it always been positive? I mean, I, I guess we've, you've had a few, but I'll start with Gary. I suppose uh, Wayne. And, and Cristiano wanted to leave, didn't he? Go on, then. So Cristiano wanted to leave, and obviously the manager did a deal with him that he could leave the year after. Which, to be fair, I think is a type of thing that ordinarily would happen in a situation like that. We say Harry Kane, you say, no, I want one more year from you, then you can go. Which I think is what Harry probably thinks has happened, maybe, that he thought he had a deal ready to go. That gentleman's agreement, which I know people don't agree with. But, you know, if someone says you can leave next summer, you expect that, that might be followed through. And then obviously Wayne, where he put that statement out before that Champions League game, on it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't really, I don't remember the statement. I remember him wanting to leave at a point and... It wasn't nice, really, was it? I suppose no. when one of your players, and I think he was going to, or wanted to go, allegedly, to another club that was quite close by. Did anybody feel he had a point within the dressing room? Sorry to. Well, I, I didn't. No, I wouldn't. Does that does that create a divide where you 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 look at someone and you're like, are you 
are you really here for the rest of us? Do, you just... If you play for Sir Alex Ferguson for 15 years and you've won sort of six, seven Premier Leagues, you tend not to question him. Yeah. Not because you sort of just fallen into line, because the guys delivered, built three teams, four teams, and who? Why would a player in the dressing room question whether he could build another team? So do you understand yeah. what I mean? Right? I'm not saying it's wrong yeah, for a player not yeah. to question a manager, but when a manager's delivered three different teams and probably that many titles, it's unbelievable. I think you get to the point where the manager's built that control and that sort of level of trust yeah. that you can't really question him, can you? Did did those players come back in in terms of waiting? Run, I think as an Arsenal fan myself, I think you destroyed us a few times in, in, yeah. in that period. Did they come back and give it 100%? I did, did, you, didn't I? Did, did, you ever, did you ever did. question? Yeah, no, I, I think did, Wayne would, yeah. 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 Did, yeah. I, I think with Wayne, he probably had his own frustrations at the time. Like Gary was talking before about Cristiano, yeah. when he had to play on the left-hand side for him in the yeah. Champions League final. Wayne didn't want to do that, but yeah. he'd, he'd do that for the team. So there was probably a lot of frustration during that as well, and that's probably why he came up with what he did. With Harry Kane going in back into um, the, the, the dressing room, after what happened in the summer, are players really going to give him needle? Yeah, they, say, care. they care. Do they? Obviously, they care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it yeah. sometimes doesn't like you see training no, they pictures do. and they're all laughing. You don't think Harry Kane cares? Of course Harry Kane cares. No, I don't. I'm not saying I don't care. He's oh, aware of players, players around, around him. Actually, going to pull Harry Kane. No, up we and go, did at the time with Wayne. Dick, yeah, we did at the time because we were obviously sort of wedded to the club. So we did at the time. We weren't. We weren't that happy. You know what I mean? I remember not being that happy about the fact. It wasn't the fact he was wanting to leave. It was the public statement he made, which he actually apologised for within 24 hours. You're talking about that situation, yeah. but what Harry Kane is to Tottenham is what Steven Gerrard was to yeah. Liverpool and he nearly went to Chelsea uh, a couple of times two summers running. I just think what you said there, where you, do you seriously believe that the relationship with Kane and Tottenham will, will always be, there will always be something there because of him wanting to go? I mean, well, if you're comparing to Gerrard, but Gerrard went on to, 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 to lead Liverpool for another four or five years. Or yeah, but don't you see Kane now, do you still see Kane leaving or do you see him staying? I, I, I just, game? Since he'd come back, he wouldn't be asked in the slightest. I think he'd be definitely fine with him. No, I definitely, no, I'd definitely take the moral high ground right now, <laughs> for sure. No, I, I get it. But the fact is, he hasn't done that. He, no, has, no, no, he no. hasn't done that. So until he does, the best way he can repay us, and there is this, this relationship, is. It's this strain, to sit, and that's to put it kindly. I mean, I, I find it difficult, genuinely. Like, to just I just don't see the same player. Listen, as I, I was critical of Kane in the summer. But the way you're talking is almost what he's done is unforgivable. So he's actually wanted he's, to leave the club. But, he, so, he's saying that we're not good enough for him, and that's quite. A painful. Is that not true? Not, not, no, but yeah, but what you'd be asking me not to react to that. No, I mean, no, I understand Whether it's true that, or not, it's I mean, still painful to I, hear, right? I used to have this argument at Liverpool where. A completely different thing. Steve McManaman left on a Bosman rule and the Liverpool fans were really <coughs> upset about it. Yeah. But then the year after we got Marcus Bobber on a frame, we think it's amazing. Yeah. So you sign four or five players every summer. So they wanted to leave their club to yeah. come to you. So everyone's yeah. happy when your club signs oh, no, someone. No, I'm not saying I'm not a hypocrite. I no, am, I think but... it's different that. That's different that. What do you mean? I think it's different <coughs> when you've got one of your own. It's no, emotive. Listen, no, I've said that throughout the summer. For us three being local players, you, you, are, you are seen differently at your own club. But... I don't think Kane, even though I was critical of him, did something that was unforgivable. No, where he, it wasn't he, so he Campbell, strike, or he just sort of said, "I'd, I'd like to leave. I, you know, I want to win trophies." He, you know, do you understand what I mean? I don't think no, it was the worst thing in the world that I've seen. If, no, if Spurs were on the cusp of winning the Champions League, of winning the league, then you'd understand because it's almost like a sideways step. But if he's going to sit, it's, it's surely you can understand that that is the pinnacle of English football right now. Yeah, yeah but that's like saying it's like having, a, cost, it's like having a, a wife who wants to marry somebody who's richer than you or, 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 or who's better looking. But players you might left, have had a great marriage, but you're still, that still hurts. Players, that have left Tottenham to go to Man <laughs> players have left Tottenham to go to Manchester United and to other clubs for many, many years. This is not a new phenomenon. Modric leading to Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> You're sticking a knife in a wound there. Uh, you know what, we, we could talk about this all day, but from, from your point of view, I'm going to come back to you, Vlad. Nuno, what have you made of his start? Kind of the, the style of play is, is I've heard it, it was described as, as Mourinho, but without the trophies. I, I, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, I heard that somewhere. Please that was our friend from Liverpool, I think. <laughs> jo Jose Light, I think he called him. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's no. not fair. It's unfair. It's not unfair, no. Oh. <laughs> that, that so we agree on that one. I mean, the football's probably been more boring than, than, than the Jose Mourinho. <laughs> we, 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 we had four... Seriously, no, that might explain Kane's form. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You, you watched yeah, Wolves he... last year, the last two years. No, they're, sir. They're the sir. most boring team to watch ever. We were, we were so bottom... They, we were they just wait for teams to make mistakes. Yeah. Like, you can't really do that at Tottenham. And I always say the Tottenham way, they play on the counter-attack. Harry Kane, he's not, a, he's not a counter-attack player. No. He's not quick enough to be that. 
That's ended that argument, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, no, I can't argue it. And that, that, that's the thing. Harry Kane probably get, got more stick than, um, you, than is necessary because Daniel of the Levy's, football you're playing. Levy's biggest mistake this summer, I say he's the best football operator, was his handling yeah. of the managerial situation yeah, from know. Jose yeah. to Ryan Mason. And then, basically, I think he was about sixth, seventh in line, you know. Yeah. I would have expected that he would have had that handled better. And I, I know it's difficult. <laughs> I know it's difficult, you know, you're in that position where you sort of sack a manager <laughs> and then you, and then you, you can't sack the next one too quick. You, look, you know, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to leave No, what happens is, you know, we had it last no season where Scalzi took over at Salford. So you sack a manager, um, wrongly, I'll hold my hands up. Which one? No. <laughs> <laughs> you sack a manager and then you think, oh, we'll get a manager sorted, we'll get five or six, you know, there's five or six lined up, you've got two or three already on your cards and then all of a sudden those two or three that you're thinking are going to come, say no to you for a different reason or whatever it might be and then you think oh and then you're basically chasing your yeah. tail yeah. Yeah, it was and I think that's exactly what happened with Daniel Levy I think he thought stadium Jose's been here I'll get a great manager don't worry and he's ended up thinking oh and that's that's that that was badly handled it happens I wouldn't expect Daniel Levy though 15 years in the job to leave himself exposed like that I wonder if the the, the, the shortness of contract with Nuno's on two years is on relatively low money compared to other other uh, managers that whether this is just a bit of breathing room for Daniel Levy and Paratici to think actually what's the next proper play and Nuno's good enough to to hold the fort but they're, they're looking beyond him I wonder if that's but that wasn't his plan because he tried to go for Rodgers and all the other great managers so he, he, that wasn't his plan yeah but if, if, if Nuno isn't the answer or not the one he actually wanted give him a short term contract and then plan for the next one yeah that's what I'm saying it, it's, he's, he, he's on plan B, C, D and he's making it up as he goes along which to be fair like you say we ended up last year oh, I'll speak openly about this you took over what we thought would be a couple of weeks you ended up in how long? five, six weeks? So it? <laughs> felt like it anyway didn't it? <laughs> Like he's he ring, he ringing me up every day saying have you got a manager <laughs> <laughs> right guys I want to take it across North London Arsenal tight here we go you're, you're, you're a lot more smiley you're a lot less shouted than last time how, how happy are you with, uh, with what Arsenal have done this season I guess in the last three games especially well, thank you for, thank, first of all can I say thank you for inviting me on and inviting me on again Pleasure. very very grateful we did think and about thank, it thank, thank, <laughs> sorry we did think about it. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, so you didn't want to? <laughs> <laughs> just joking, just Great joking. Start, yeah. So I'm very grateful. Thank you to Jamie for calling me, for, for saying that I wouldn't be happy about this. I'm sure that when we do something that is good, you're going to say, I'll be happy about this when we do well. <laughs> You'll get another mention, don't worry. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You've put me on the map. <laughs> Are it's... we starting to trust the Arteta process? Well, I guess. well, with Mikel, listen, I hope he succeeds. I don't know if he will. But I'm behind him. But I've, I've, I think we have done well. Once again, on a negative point, I still think we haven't got any credit as much yeah. because we beat Norwich. It's only Norwich. We beat Burnley. It's only Burnley. We beat um, Tottenham. It's only we Tottenham. Beat Tot no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I never said that. We beat Top. We beat Tottenham. We've got credit for that. We get a draw against Brighton, Perfect. and yet, we, yet we get called lucky. But yet, yeah. nobody's lucky against us. We're the only team that's lucky. Brighton should have won. Fair enough. Yeah. But yet. When they played Crystal Palace and Mopa had one touch and he lobbed the Crystal Palace keeper, Brighton weren't lucky. You know, so I think, listen, we're on the up. It's still a long way to go. It's not where we want to be. Yeah. It obviously is not good enough for us, but we have to be honest and say, this is where we are. Like, what, what is good enough for Arsenal? What's good enough? What you mean? No, you've just said it's not still not good enough. It's not good. What do you mean? Well, what's good enough? What for level the club? of performance is? What what position or, would it be in the league? For now. Where, where or do you for think now. Arsenal should be? Oh, we should be. We should be challenging for the league. That's mm -hmm. what we should be. We're, we're not. And we won't be for a while. But that's where we should be. Because I, I think too, to, if you look at the teams who win the league now, that's where Arsenal want to get to. Uh, yeah. With this group of players, obviously you need world class players, and I think they've got three or four young players who are obviously not not world class, but they have the potential to to be something special. You look at sort of maybe Emil Smith Rowe, Saka, yeah. Odegaard behind, but they won't all get there. Yeah. It, it's just impossible that every, every single young player that Arsenal are bringing through get to the level that's needed to yeah. sort of win the title. So they, they will have to over the next three or four transfer windows bring bring top players in. Is that why we're you think worried. that Arsenal don't get enough credit because there's not enough players in the team? that are big names and star-studded names like you see at United. Well, why are you obsessed with that? It, everyone, you, it's always about Arsenal not getting enough credit. What is it you want? No, you know what I mean? At, at, at the top of the show, you said You don't City, get credit because you're not you a said City good and team. Chelsea have played... <laughs> yeah, but so City but, and Chelsea but, have you said, you said City and Chelsea at the top of the show have played the big teams. You didn't mention Arsenal. You mentioned United. 
what, well, you mentioned United are a team that are yet to play big teams. What makes United a big team and Arsenal not? I know they've won a lot of leagues, of course. Arsenal, Man United still, are a much bigger they, they, they team. They are a second team. Man United well, will always be a Arsenal bigger so club than Arsenal, behind, Arsenal and they're a better well, team right now. That. I don't know about that. Man United are a much bigger team and than Arsenal. And, and you're saying that. And, okay, Jay. Ty, oh, come on, behave. No, no, okay. Then, all right, then. Be, Man United okay, will always be a bigger club. We're talking about right now. We're talking about right now. Even if Arsenal are winning the league, Man United are a bigger club. I take my concern. My concern with Arsenal, that, picking up on that point. If you look at Arsenal, they played Chelsea and City in those opening three games. They played yeah. Tottenham. They played three of the top six yeah. teams. Yeah. United. When United do that next month, my fear is that they will end up on similar points to United Very through true. the fact that the, fi the fixture list has been kind to United in the first part, and they've not picked up enough points. Agree, from but it. when we're talking about the other teams, what they're saying, we're talking about in terms of the title, saying, "Oh man, you oh, haven't played Arsenal anyone." Yet. No chance so, to win the title. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying that you don't mention them in conversation when you're mentioning who City and Chelsea have played. They've played Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal lost, but you haven't mentioned them in that conversation. Because I've we'll mentioned them teams next time. in the league. <laughs> and the thing, the thing is, he Jamie... He just doesn't care about Arsenal. But, Jamie, sure. you're saying that... You're saying that... You're, so, you're saying that Manchester United are bigger always or bigger now? Man United will always be a bigger club than Arsenal. Always. No, but if they're bigger... Yeah, so they're bigger, they're bigger team than us, but yet, yeah, who has won... A trophy recently. We've won the FA Cup. What's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer won? But that, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about but the exactly. So club. then, when you're when you're talking <coughs> about, it, you're going to talk about that. what's his name? Andy just said they'll always they'll always be bigger than us. Even though in the Alex Ferguson arena, we were, uh, era with Roy Keane and Gary Neville and Paul Scholes dominating, we won the league at Old Trafford. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with the big boys. If they're so big. Man United are a bigger club than no, Arsenal. They, they so are big, now. No, they I'm always not, will be, and they always have been. End okay, of story. Okay, I'll take, I'll, take, I'll take your point. But yeah, in that, in that, in, when you're saying Manchester on the big top, we still had an invincible team. We've gone way off track here, Tyler. No, wait, looking we've forward, what does Arteta have to do? To... Look at Adam. Look, yeah, I know, he's like, he, he needs to get him on staff, that's what he needs to do. Because he knows it's the truth, isn't it? It's not the truth. It is the truth. You're having a problem, <laughs> you're having a problem with the fact that Arsenal aren't very good anymore. I know you're not a European team. But no, you know. We're in the Champions League, bro. Okay, what have you won? What have you won? You're not even in the Europa. What have you won? What's only going to show us one? Because ain't saying you might win the league. You got it. What has only going to show us one? Don't make sense. Nothing, exactly, nothing. So you can't make sense. Listen, I respect Manchester United. I'm not dissing Manchester United, but what I'm saying is, when you're saying that, you also have to say Manchester United have dropped as well. But if you're saying they're a bigger club all round, they have not had an invincible team, have they? No. Exactly. So then you're You've saying that. You've never won the European Cup. Exactly. But that's what. So what I'm saying is, there's levels. So right, you right, can't. But Le 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 Leicester have won the league more recently than, than Arsenal have. Yeah, so but they, who are Leicester? Are... <laughs> you, can't, you can't. Listen, you can't even mention Leicester because the thing is, right? I'm, I'm just saying, playing devil's advocate here. Just... Yeah, no. But what it is is that when when I did start, right? I was saying we should be challenged for the leagues. Back in yeah. the day, it was us and Manchester United. I it remember. was Patrick yeah. versus Key. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that I don't, I'm not disrespecting Manchester United. I can't disrespect Manchester United. <laughs> but I don't think that we are that smaller to them. Because look at what we want. Look at what our said done. Like I said, I was saying... You wanted them out? <laughs> not me. No, no, no. Not no, me. Not, 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 not tired, to be fair. Not tired, to be fair. Not me. And if you can find that, <laughs> I will give you anything so you, you want. You have to finish find, in fourth every if, year. If you can find that, I'll wear a Liverpool shirt for the rest of my life. If you can find <laughs> that. Right, right let's, let's, let's look forward. Let's look forward with Arsenal. <laughs> Gary, have Arsenal turned the corner with, with, with Mikel Arteta now? Look, I, I was at, I think, the first three matches uh, and I was con massively concerned that they were weak. I saw the team against uh, Tottenham. I watched the game against Tottenham two, three weeks ago. Even before the game, with the team that came out, I felt more comfortable. I just feel like they're better balanced. Um, they, no doubt Smithrow and Saka bring unbelievable energy and pace to the team. If they can get Aubameyang in the mood he was in that day, every single week, then they've got a chance of having a good season. And I do think it's turned the corner in terms of how we were feeling about it. Mikel Arteta was under massive pressure. People were saying three, four weeks six, ago. Six games to, he was six under games massive to pressure. And now I don't think he's under that pressure now. I mean, obviously, if he lost three, he would be. But I think the next run of games are all right. They're not that bad the next few games. A couple of games, the next two games at home, aren't they, I think? Yeah, yeah the legend is coming back. Patrick, 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 yeah, yeah. Got, cause, yeah, I couple. think it's going to be that type of year for Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're going to have three or four games where they do great. Yeah. And yeah. everybody's saying they're going to win the lead. And then there are three or four games where Arteta's going to be out and sacked. What bits do Arsenal need? Arsenal's biggest problem is I think there's a lot of people now have got a, a space in their lives for laughing at Arsenal. I don't mean that in a horrible way, but it's yeah. become 
they become a bit of too much banter around yeah. Arsenal. So yeah. that's I think that's spot on. They'll have three good games. And then they'll have one bad game and everyone will dive on them like it's a massive a massive crisis. That team in the first few games of the season, they was going, they're done, they're finished. They, had, they didn't start the season with Aubameyang, didn't have, oh, they didn't have lots of players Odegaard missing. hadn't signed yet, Party was injured, Ramsdale hadn't started yet, White wasn't settled in yet. You plug them players in, they, they're going to be better than people probably want them to be. I think there's a lot of people who want Arsenal to be rubbish because they quite like mm. Arsenal Who wants Arsenal to be rubbish, rubbish though? I don't think... I don't think there, there is no, that... There is that... Everyone, everyone laughs at a little bit, aren't they, now Arsenal? Yeah. Well, when United were having their, their, their period, I think people quite enjoyed the fact that mm. they'd been at the top of the tree, they'd let everyone know and suddenly they weren't so good and it, it kind of humbled them and I feel like Arsenal... There were team is a lot of people's second team. If, if you're in, in the Premier, you like the way they play football. Groups that are going to be missing a lot of content. Yeah. I think around <laughs> London, if Arsenal are good, is, is what I'd say. <laughs> who would they? Who would they? They support Spurs. And they cost an opportunity. No, no, not to tell. No. <laughs> 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 Even though they're the European champions, you still can't say <laughs> yeah, that yeah, to him. Yeah, no, 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 Jamie, they are the European champions, but they, do they have a gold trophy like Usain Bolt? No, they don't. So this is where we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, this is where we're talking about. The greatest. You say about the greatest. Is the world? The greatest. When Ty he's started got, rapping, I think kid. that's time for us to take a little bit of a break, guys. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a very enjoyable part. Uh, we'll see you in about 15. Well done. <laughs>